CERN is famously home to the largest scientific instrument on the planet, the Large Hadron Collider, studying the tiniest particles. It's truly worldwide effort. You have over 3,000 scientists um, from, is it nearly 200 universities? Uh, yes, at least that number, yes. With this come some heavy computational requirements, from administration to outreach to profiling beams of particles, and they also have cloud computing, but not in the way that you might understand as software developers, because I understand that you actually do computations based on real-life cloud formations, rather than the cloud computing. Yeah, there's actually an experiment yeah. called Cloud. There's an experiment called the Cloud at CERN, and the goal is to basically to investigate the study to see what is the impact of cosmic rays and the production of clouds and of course the, what is the impact of the climate change in the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm here at Vostasen with Joel and Derek. Hello. And you work in the IT department, so you have an, a not, not the IT department, no. please correct me. So uh, we work in the, the uh, finance and administrative processes department. Although we do IT. Which is actually, <laughs> no. it's completely <laughs> confusing at CERN. Yes, we, we actually do administrative computing, so all the IT for CERN's administration is done within our department. So we, we work very closely with the IT department, but IT department's got a much broader scope than us. Exactly. So the goal is basically that IT provides to us infrastructure, so the servers, the database, etc., and we do the development itself. So it's a split of work that uh, IT itself, the department, does all the infrastructure, and then us, the developers, are spread across CERN yeah. in the physics departments, in the, the administrative sector, in the experiments, everywhere, literally. So you have a huge, huge responsibility. Uh, yeah, I mean, CERN is a one billion Swiss francs a year organization. So where this is money coming into CERN, so we spend other people's money, basically. So yes, we have a huge responsibility to make sure that it's spent wisely, efficiently, and all the right stuff, basically. So what does your day-to-day -day job involve from a development perspective? Uh, well, I'm basically the technical lead, so I'm the group leader, responsible basically for running a team of developers. There's actually around 50 developers within my team. Uh, Joao is one of the team leaders within that team, so he basically does more of the day-to-day -day, uh, actually running of the software projects. Exactly. For me, it's a typical day for a software developer, so I have a system to uh, maintain and evolve. It's called EDH. It stands for CERN's Electronic Development Handling System. And it's the system at CERN where you go if you want to do any kind of administrative procedure. So say you want to go on a training, on a safety course, or learning about Spring or Java, then you go to this system and apply there for a course. Say you want to take holidays or you want to buy some materials, uh, uh, a pen drive or a, a mouse, you go to this system. So we aggregate every procedure of the of the at CERN in a single system called EDH. And I'm the, the fully developer of this, so my responsibilities are doing not just development, but also uh, programming all the um, functionalities, uh, coordinating all the work from all the developers, from junior developers, because of course CERN, we get people from all over the world, sometimes students with very, very little experience. So of course, one of our goals is to teach them how to uh, uh, use these tools, how to become better developers, and how to become more productive, such that uh, when they return to their home country after the experience is finished here, then they can apply that uh, knowledge in their industries in their local uh, countries. Yeah, and I think that's really important. It's one of CERN's missions. But although we're also here, obviously, to do fundamental physics research, that we also have a very important element, which is education. We have hundreds of students actually come to CERN every year just to do their practice work or find out what we're doing in all different fields, not just physics, but also computing, engineering. Uh, you name the topic, there's someone probably working on it at CERN. How do the students apply to do your experience here? Okay, there's basically several different programs. They all start via the university. Uh, there's different programs set up, some per country, but there's also general programs. So there's a summer student program, which is, uh, I can't remember, I think it's uh, three months. It's three months to over the summer. We have a few hundred students who will apply and come, and basically, not only do they get to work on technical projects, but there's also a whole lecture series with uh, world-leading physicists and scientists who actually actually give lectures every afternoon on particle physics and all the engineering that goes on at CERN. So it's a real wonderful yeah. education yeah. experience. So it's pretty much in the morning they work on the projects, in the afternoon they have lectures, and of course in the evening they go partying somewhere uh, mm -hmm. down in those uh, buildings over there. <laughs> yeah, so we, we have the largest hotel, one of the largest hotels in the area, so there's uh, about 550 rooms in the hotel just across the road there. So they actually sleep in and, here. And they actually live and work here, so they live at CERN and work at CERN. So it's really a university fantastic feel. experience, much, yes. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And can you goes to the lectures as well. Yes, I, that's one of the nice things actually working at CERN is all these things are open. So uh, working at CERN, if you want to find out a bit more about the technology behind what we're doing, you're free to walk into any of the lectures and listen in and take notes as well. So I can ask you about particle physics? Uh, you can, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have any answers. <laughs> no, but I think this is really one of the unique parts of CERN is that uh, you can be having lunch downstairs and uh, just in the table across from you will be a Nobel Prize winner physicist. It's Thank all... Yeah. 
a Nobel Prize uh, winner, in fact. Yeah, and they're, they're basically just using the same facilities as the rest of us, and uh, and you can go up and ask them. Uh, so tell me about this Higgs boson or whatever. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really wonderful place. Brilliant. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Not just because he's my boss, I really agree. I really think, <laughs> I really think it's, a, it's a great place. Uh, because of all these aspects that Derek mentioned, the education part, the diversity, so you go to the restaurants and uh, you see people from Russia, from Spain, from Portugal, from uh, Germany, from Quite France. Like Portugal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so from all over the world, and it's really fantastic, all this segregation of culture which uh, take place in here. I heard that as well as um, being one of the largest scientific communities, um, because of the truly multicultural aspect it's in, you're also being studied by social scientists. That's true, yes. <laughs> there's, there's studies going on all the time, particularly just in terms of working out what the impact is of CERN. Because so, these are things which are much harder to measure about what the social impact of CERN is. So yes, we can see you know, what we've done in terms of how many uh, collisions we've done or how much engineering has been done. But try, trying to measure the actual benefits of the, you know, the educational aspects and what CERN brought to society is really quite tough. Mm -hmm. And so there's lots of studies going on about that. Uh, I mean, the best example, of course, is things like the World Wide Web. What did that do to the rest of the world when we, when we, when we invented the web as a thing which CERN needed for scientists to talk together? Of course, we give away to the rest of the world, but that's transformed the world. I mean, you can hardly imagine what the world would be like without the World Wide Web. It started here. I wouldn't have a job. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank no you.